Thanks for joining us today from the Owner's Corner. Uh, we have the Tinsmans with us, but um, first we've got a couple of other people that wanna just give a few updates. So first up is Ashley, she's our seed manager and she's been attending lots of tours and field days this summer. Um, and she's been watch walking a lot of the product as well. Ashley, what's on your mind and what do you wanna share with this group? Good morning, everyone. Just a few things I'd like to share with everyone this morning. We have some things coming down the pipeline that I'm really excited about for the 24 season. And just want to give you a heads up on those. And if you'd like to get out in the field and see what we have to offer, let your salesman know. And we'd love to show you what we've got. So the first up is the VT4 Pro. It is a new trait that DeKalb is coming out with this year. And it has three above ground and two below ground modes of action with that RNAi technology to target the corn rootworm. And then it also has four herbicide tolerances. So you've probably heard of the double pro that we currently offer. And this is just taking it to the next step and offering below ground with that above ground. Um, one thing that I think is really cool about the VT4 Pro is that we took out that Herculex gene, which had some yield drag to it. And so we're really looking at a high yield potential with this VT4 Pro corn. Um, the acres that you're going to see this on is the lower pressure corn rootworm on those corn on corn acres. So if you're somebody that has that low pressure with the um, corn on corn acre, feel free to give your salesman a call. And this could be a great fit at your farm. The next thing I want to touch on is the short corn. And this has been a huge buzz in the countryside over the past few months. And I'm excited to see it launch in the 24 season. Uh, DeKalb and Bravant, two of our brands that we offer here at Liquid Grow, are coming out with a short corn. And um, DeKalb actually has some infield trials in the Quad Cities area. So if you're somebody that wants to check that out, call your salesman and we'd love to get you out there to see that. Um, but the biggest thing is that it's shortening the um, distance in between each node. So it's really shortening up that corn, uh, preventing us from that root lodging and some of that green snap that we see in those wind events. Um, so like I said, if you want to see that, we have some infield trials and we'd love to get you out there to check that out. Um, the next one is a tar spot update. This year, I have noticed less and less tar spot than we have in years past. And I think that's because of the moisture that we really haven't had except for in the past couple weeks. Um, with that being said, even though we're seeing less of it, don't hold back on that fungicide. We still want to keep applying that. And not only for um, prevention of spreading of the diseases, but overall plant health. And lastly, I just want to say thank you to all of you for choosing Liquid Grow and allowing us to be on your acre and help you make these tough decisions on your farms. So we really appreciate that. And we look forward to seeing you in the fall and spring. Thanks, Ashley. Um, and we look forward to seeing you at all of the plot nights that we have coming up later here this summer at the different locations. Uh, now I'm going to turn it over to Jake. I know he's been out looking at soybean fields already this morning. Um, so Jake, what are you seeing in the field out there? I'm seeing wet jeans and wet socks is what I'm seeing. <laughs> yeah, I hope you took a change um, of clothes along. <laughs> I didn't today. I didn't expect that much to. Um, so there's a couple things I'd be thinking about right now. Um, number one, I'd be thinking about corn rootworm. And the reason I say that is, you know, in the last few days, we've seen some adults, and historically speaking, we should be seeing some adults. But that means that rootworm feeding is either done or almost complete. So if you're going to see lodging or damage associated with rootworm feeding, it's pretty much at its end. So that means that there will be lodging in the field if you have high rootworm pressure. And I think it's a great time in history to make sure that you're understanding what your pressure looks like. And the reason I say that is for a couple of reasons. Number one, you know, in parts of our geography, both the Chrome and the SmartStacks uh, trait packages have failed to control rootworm. Now, to be frank, that's historic, that, you know, up until now, that's been in seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years continuous corn often with the same trade package planted, by the way. Um, but if you have some of those fields that have been in long-term continuous corn and you want to keep it that way, it'd be a really wise idea to go check those fields out right now to see if you have injury or any lodging, because that would be an indication to you, okay, next year 
I need to go to Smart Stacks Pro, or next year I need to use an insecticide. Um, obviously a granular or infer a liquid insecticide for rootworm control. The second reason I would take a good hard look right now at my fields for lodging is there's been a resurgence in both in rotation resistant northern and western corn rootworm. So in the last couple of years, I've been called out to look at more and more of the rotation resistant western corn rootworm and northern corn rootworm. So even if you've been in rotation with soybean, it'd be a good idea to know what you have out there if you have any injury out there so you can proactively plan for next growing season. And if there's one use for a drone, because I don't like walking through pollinated corn and nobody does, if there's one use for a drone that's like the absolute best use, it would be for scouting for rootworm injury. And the reason I say that is these injury pockets typically show up as you know, 10, 20, 30 foot circles out in fields. And you can typically pick those up pretty good with a drone. If you don't have any, if you don't see any in the drone image, don't walk out in the field. If you do, you need to go out and investigate and see what's going on out there. And if you don't have a drone, we have several throughout the company, contact your local, local liquor go salesman. The second thing I would, you know, uh, Ashley already mentioned it, but the, the, the other question that's on everybody's mind right now is, you know, do we need to spray a fungicide and are we going to have tar spot? If I had a crystal ball, I would tell you, but I don't. Meaning, are we going to have tar spot? But this is what I think you need to think about. Unlike northern corn leaf blight and gray leaf spot, none of these hybrids have, you know, generally speaking, none of these hybrids have good resistance to tar spot. As Ashley mentioned, we've had the weather in the last couple of weeks, thank God, uh, to get the tar spot moving. Rain, raindrop impact blows this tar spot up on the leaves and continued wetness, leaf wetness gets it going. We've had some rains, we've had some dew. So we might have the infection getting started right now, but you just can't physically see it yet. So I wouldn't count out tar spot not being problematic. And it has been reported in other parts of the state where they've had more rain early. I wouldn't count it out. And I think you should think about this from a risk tolerance perspective. Um, let's say you spray a fungicide, you know, the tar spot never became a problem. You only get a four or five bushel yield increase. Obviously that doesn't pay, but you also didn't lose, you know, more than 10, 15 bucks an acre at most, right? It was kind of a break even scenario. But if we do have tar spot and it gets bad, you could be looking at losing 15, 20, 30 bushels per acre. And so there's a lot more risk. There's a lot more downside risk to not applying a fungicide. Um, you know, the applying a fungicide is the less risky proposition in this in this conversation. Um, so that's the fact. Well, and that's Jake, not to interrupt you, but not to interrupt you, Jake, but you have to even think about your standability at that point, because where I grew up is kind of the epicenter of uh, tar spot and standability, I mean, it'll just take the stocks down to nothing. So not only are you losing bushels, but you're losing harvest time as well. That can definitely happen. So what else are you seeing in the field, Jake? You got you got about one more minute. Oh, well, if I have one more minute, um, there's a lot of yellow soybeans out there and in, in spots and fields. And uh, I've just kind of started investigated that. Um, you know, Katie was at a field yesterday. She asked me to go out and look at it, and it was fusarium uh, seedling disease. That's what we determined it was. I looked at another field this spring. It was also fusarium uh, seedling disease. Um, and so, you know, if you have some yellow spots, particularly in some clayer, clayier or lower lying areas in soybean fields, I'd go take a look at that. Um, I'm going to go take a look at a lot more. But if it is fusarium, you're going to be looking for lower stems that are unusually red and um, roots that are basically kind of have a dry rot and they're brown and dying. Uh, and, and pull some healthy plants and look at the roots. If the roots are nice, bright and white and healthy looking, you know, if, if that's the difference you're seeing, then it, it could be a chance it is fusarium. If you think you have that going on, it can be hard to tell. Again, contact your liquor grow salesman. They can send me some pictures, or if I can find the time, 
I might even come take a look. And the reason knowing, it's not that you can do anything about it right now, unfortunately, but the reason knowing is important is we can think about next year. Do we need to look at a different variety? Do we need to look at a different seed treatment package? You know, there's things you can do to plan for the future if you know what problems you have now. Well, thanks, Jake, for that. And we're going to move it on over to the owner's corner here. And with us today, we have Hub Tinsman and John Tinsman. And John actually has been purchasing um, all of the raw materials for fertilizers for five crop seasons now. So with that, I'll turn it over to you guys. All right. So some good news is <clears throat> last year around this time, the December 22 corn wasn't uh, much different in price than this year where the December 23 corn is. Uh, at that same time, we've seen the core nutrients fall by 30 to 35 percent in price. And so what that means is the affordability on a bushel of corn has significantly improved. You can see where it was uh, the previous two years on that yellow and green line and where we are this year on UAN. So we're starting to scrape the bottom of a historical uh, ratio average. And that's going to be very good for you. And it should leave more dollars in your pocket at the end of the day. Uh, at these prices and at these ratios, I think it's a good idea if, if growers are comfortable with it, with locking in fertilizers early at prepay and uh, and selling, you know, if you if you lock in $90 an acre of nitrogen, selling $90 an acre of, uh, of corn bushels against it uh, in the futures, I mean, you lock in that price uh, and you lock in a favorable ratio that you should be able to uh, generate good income on. Now, when we move over to phosphates, I'm using BAP as an example. Um, when we move over to phosphates, you can see again, this is significantly better than the past two years and uh, coming up on a historical low at this time of year. So again, uh, our phosphates, when we come for pre fall prepay, are gonna be offering um, in our in our banded fertilizers, they're gonna be offering very favorable ratios like this um, versus a bushel of corn. Here we can see potash as well. Um, potash is again, much, much better than the previous two years. Um, it's one of the highest, uh, you know, it's still a little bit above the very bottom of the barrel on the historical averages, but it's still very favorable. Um, in, all of these, in all of these nutrients, we saw, you know, a lot of price volatility over the past two years. You know, we're hoping the prices do not continue to move that much this year, who knows, but, I can say that uh, the a big factor of these costs are natural gas costs. And natural gas went from two dollars to twelve dollars, back down to six dollars, back up. You know, this year we're around three and we're low. And th these low energy costs are helping make the production of these products much cheaper. Um, they're helping bring down the costs. And uh, we also have people investing uh, places in Canada and stuff and inve significantly investing in more potash production, which should help ease some of the, you know, shortages that we saw over the previous couple years and provide some price stability and also hopefully keep these ratios low. But again, uh, again, there's a lot of different factors going on in the world markets. And actually we've seen over the past, over the past month that prices have actually seemed to start to rise at NOLA. So, we, we recommend that when the fall prepay prices come out, whether for it's for nitrogen or whether it's for uh, whether it's for P and K or sulfur, that you consider doing that. It seems like eight or nine out of 10 years historically, it's a favorable thing to do to, to prepay early if you're available. The whole industry is set up to, uh, to give you an economic advantage if you're able to do that. Um, just to move tons early. Those production plants can't stay in business if they don't move the tons. If uh, if everybody goes to wait until spring to do it, you know, the whole industry would break down. It's not able to happen. So so there's a big advantage, I think, historically to prepaying early if you're able to and, and applying fertilizer in fall. Now, those same ratios, I don't have the sulfur chart up, the ATS, but it looks similar to the UAN chart. Um, so with that, I'll move it over to Hub. So I think John hit on the most of the highlights just for just for uh, economic reasons for you to think about. It looks like P and K is approximately, as John mentioned, 35% lower than last fall. It does look like nitrogen's lower. So if you're considering it, um, when's the right time? Eight out of the, as John mentioned, eight out of the last 10 years. It's in August to September timeframe. 
So with that, Katie, I'll follow up with any questions you want to fire away. Okay, Hub. Uh, first question that I've got is, so as you look at the last five years, what decisions have been favorable to a farmer to make for their operation? Terrific question. If you look at the last five years, if you're looking for what's the best way to have an insurance program that, and I don't mean insurance that you'd buy as a policy, but insurance for your revenue and for your bushels, you need to do consider three things. Number one, fungicide, fungicide, fungicide for what you're doing right now to protect the bushels that Jake and, and Ashley have already mentioned. Number two, apply P and K in the fall. It's got a five-year average of somewhere between four to five dollars an acre cheaper when looking at applying in the fall, paying at the end of the year versus paying at the end of the year and applying in the spring. And then number three, buying nitrogen when you are most comfortable, whether that's in August, whether that's September or October, buying early has has proven to be a very economically beneficial thing for you and your uh, fertilizer investment. Okay, I got some notes here on that. Um, here's another one that's coming in. So what, what keeps you up at night as you go around on the countryside and talk to farmers? What are things that keep you up at night? So over the last two or three years, because of the economic situation in terms of the cost of fertilizer, people have been really scaling back both potash and sulfur rates to make their fertilizer budgets work. Unfortunately, while that's maybe worked economically, agronomically, we're seeing deficiencies of both K and S show up a lot more frequently, which means potentially we're robbing yield from our current situation. As the, you see the potash price decrease, as John mentioned, you need to really consider if in 24, it's time to move back to what I would call removal rates, which in the case of K might be an additional five, 10, 15 pounds of K per acre up into that 90 pounds uh, of crop removal, just to make that as a consideration because now the favorable pricing might um, suggest that you do that. Sulfur is another situation that seems to be showing up more and more. Part of that's because we don't see as much uh, other containing fertilizers having sulfur. And then number two, um, the crop yield is pushing, you know, as we push the yield, the demand for sulfur is key. And that 15 to 20 pounds per acre is just barely cutting it. Okay. So um, if fertilizer, basically what I'm hearing from you guys is if fertilizer is at a better price point this year, maybe putting on a little bit more and, trying to build some of those savings accounts, as I like to call them, in your soil, it, it's a good year to be doing that. It's definitely a good year to be considering doing that because ultimately the price is more favorable, supply is plentiful, um, and we're in a good shape to basically be able to band apply that P and K, especially that K this fall for your economic benefit. Okay, so here's another question for you guys. Um, there's some talk going on in the radio right now that the river levels are dropping on the Mississippi. So how is that going to impact fall fertilizer for liquid grow? For liquid grow, it won't make much of a difference. A hundred percent of our supply we have delivered by rail and we have in place well, uh, well before the season even begins. So, uh, so certainly people that are picking up off of river terminals, it could be a significant issue for, but for twin state and liquid grow customers, uh, it's not an issue at all. Cool. Okay. Um, and here's another one that we got in. What is the 10 year outlook for liquid grow and how can we grow our business together in the future? So I'll, I'll try to take on that one. Basically at the moment, we're all about producing more bushels for you. If, if you're able to increase your output, your economic situation will improve and any little nuance that we can find that will improve, whether it's two, three, six bushels, whatever, we're researching it. We spend a lot of money year in and year out researching what is the next best thing. And so we're focused on moving your yield curve from whether it be from 225 to 260 or whether it's from 260 to 305. The answer is we're focused on increasing your yield output because that's in the end what's beneficial both for you and for Liquid Grow. Um, you know, just from my viewpoint here, looking over to you guys, uh, the 10 year outlook looks to be sitting right there in the in the camera. You know, you got John sitting next to you. You've been you and Scott have been teaching him the ropes. There's other uh, Tinsman family members that are learning the ropes as well in different parts of the organization. So 
I think that just having you guys sitting there shows a lot of what the 10 year outlook looks like. So uh, we got one more here. Um, what's the most exciting development in our industry at the moment that you are watching and could implement? So exact strips is basically the next the next move in terms of technology stuff that we're trying to really hone in on. There's quite a bit that was put in in the crop year 21, a little bit more in 22, significantly more in 23, and we'll be pushing even more into 24. That's taking that banded applied P and K and putting it exactly where you, the customer, really want it. Whether that's two inches off to the off to the side of the row, on top of the row, we basically follow your AB lines and apply it where you want it put. That's that is where we're, you know technology as technology and application moves forward, we want to be on the cutting edge with it. Okay, I think we might have one more question here. I'm waiting one second. What's a better buy early, P and K or nitrogen? Oh, we got maybe two. You know, I think I think they're both good buys early. You know, I think one of the best things about buying early right now is that. Uh, is that when you go to buy in August, you know what the prices will be. We, I mean, people have no idea what they'll be in April or something. So, uh, so you know that the favor, the ratios are really favorable right now in both of those, uh, in both P and K and N. Um, and you know, there could be a chance that N doubles or triples in value like it has in the past, or there could be a chance that it happens in P and K. So, so nobody can, has a crystal ball to see the future, but right now it's good in all three of those categories. I would say this, spinning off and adding to what John just mentioned, if you're looking at the next short window of whether it's 30 or 60 days, it's nitrogen, nitrogen, nitrogen. I mean, that's your interest level. That's what's the historically been moving and the peers. That's the time to make a move. Okay. And the last question that's up here is, what is your estimated cost difference between UAN and NH3? It's not completely determined yet, but I would say probably you're going to be staring at somewhere into that eight to ten dollars an acre. But it will be narrow, much narrower than it would have been 12 months ago. So the bottom line is it's narrowing, it's getting more competitive, um, but it's not exactly set in stone, at least as of yet. Okay, well, it doesn't look like we have any other questions. Um, for all of you on here, the Liquid Girl Loop, it's our text messaging service that you know Jake does those weekly videos on. If you're not already signed up, um, talk to your sales applicator. They'll be sure to sign you up for it. And thanks for being on today and have a great day. Gain the latest news from our experts in the field straight to your hands. Sign up for our weekly tech service where we provide quick and to the point videos shot on site to help you plan your planting date, know when to scout and which diseases are present in your area. Become aware of upcoming tech and new seed options. Precisely time fungicide, insecticide, and chemical application for best financial returns, and much more. Every choice you make as a farmer matters on the field. With more information on hand, the better agronomic decisions you can make, keeping your ROI high yield strong and soil healthy for the long haul. Sign up is free and easy. Simply text the word JOIN to 844-843-9247. Cancel any time by texting the word STOP. It's just that easy. No spam, just helpful information shared once a week. Stay in the know with Liquid Grow.